Hi, I'm Kristen Dorgalo, Assistant Director for Grand Challenges at the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. And I'm here today with my colleague Jeff Davis from NASA. Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about what you do at NASA? Sure. Um, I'm the Director of Space Life Sciences at the NASA Johnson Space Center. Mm -hmm. And we do three uh, basic things for long duration human spaceflight. We provide all of the space medicine, medical care systems. We do all the biomedical research for problems mm -hmm. that we know will occur with long duration spaceflight. And we do the environmental monitoring that includes air, water, microbiology, radiation, everything you need to do to go into space for six months. Fantastic, and also really important work. And so one of my questions for you is, you know, you and I share this in common in that in our day jobs, we spend a lot of time thinking about how to bring new minds to the problems mm -hmm. facing particularly your agency and federal agencies more broadly. Mm -hmm. What made you start engaging in collaborative innovation? What was the thing that triggered that for you at NASA? Uh, the thing that triggered it for us was our strategic plan actually mm -hmm. back in 2007. And we recognized we needed to work differently with outside organizations and we pursued a strategy of forming alliances and we did a benchmark mm. around that with other large organizations and what we learned were not only alliances effective they were 100 percent associated with innovation bringing new ideas mm. into the organization and with that in parallel we discovered open innovation from some work with harvard business school and uh, they, the two seemed to be very complementary. And so looking at the business cases for open innovation, we decided to try some pilot programs which led to our early results. So how did you get started? What was the sort of mechanism you used to engage in this innovation? The mechanism we used was we uh, secured the resources to do some pilot programs. We did a market survey of several platforms mm -hmm. and we engaged three different platforms. Um, we then went through our, what we call our portfolio of work, and we looked for gaps, where we had gaps perhaps in our knowledge or technology base or whatever the particular issue was. Um, we then ran a workshop to see if those gaps could actually fit an open innovation mall. So we did that work first, mm -hmm. and then we tried the pilots, and we think that homework actually led to the early results that we got. Fascinating. And who did you bring to the workshops to help you think through that? Um, the workshop we actually did with uh, Dr. Gary Pisano mm -hmm. at Harvard Business School, mm -hmm. and it was based on a very short Harvard Business Review article he wrote called What Kind of Collaboration is Right for You? Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a two-by-two two mapping strategy to go through your problems and see what kind of collaborative model they might fit. And the ones that fit the open innovation mo model, then we thought we had a pretty good chance of getting a result. Great. And so what I'm hearing from you is that you really engaged in the strategic analysis of where it made the most sense and where it might have highest impact. Yes. What were a couple of examples of impact to date? Yeah, so that's a good point um, before I answer that. So we, we did really look at high priority problems yeah. and ran what we thought was some tough technical challenges. And I have to admit, when we ran the pilots, we weren't sure that we would get any results because these were fairly difficult problems. So the two that come to my mind that I always like to talk about, one uh, is the solar flare challenge that we ran with mm -hmm. Bruce Cragen. Uh, Bruce Cragen was actually the winner of that challenge. And this was to predict a solar flare out for some period of time. And the results we got back actually exceeded the requirements we put in for the challenge. We're very pleased wow. with that. And why is predicting a solar flare important? Uh, the impact there is when we do deep space operations, if we get away from the vehicle or habitat, mm -hmm. meaning the crew member during a spacewalk, uh, if we can predict a solar flare for 24 hours, it extends our operational range yeah. uh, in terms of conducting missions. And so that was very important for us. Got it. And what's Bruce Cragen's background? Bruce is a radio frequency engineer. Um, he, he described himself as semi-retired or retired, but he um, spent it's about seven weeks on the problem uh, and solved it using a ground-based array data that's easily available and can be repeated yep. so that the experiment can actually be repeated. Is he somebody that NASA would normally have worked with? No, and he had not worked with NASA before. So the thing we liked about the open innovation mm -hmm. models is they really reached out to a wide uh, problem-solving community that we had not worked with before. Fantastic. And any other examples pop out to you? Um, the other one I think was very interesting 
just in changing the way we think was for food packaging mm -hmm. where we were interested in finding materials that might package food for five years. Package food for space? For space, for five years, um, for a Mars mission of that length. Cool. And uh, we ran a challenge, and what came back was a flexible graphite material from a non-biomedical industry mm -hmm. um, that we actually um, bought to test. And it turns out it meets the requirements. It's, it's a little too fragile for packaging, but it really advanced our thinking and uh, we would not have necessarily thought of flexible graphite material for food packaging. Right, so not only was it a new idea, but you were able, given uh, the other resources at the agency, to engage in prototyping and testing, um, which is probably the next step once you've got a good idea. Yes, and so we're now trying to be, these were pilots, and yeah. now we're, we're now trying to be very systematic about it. Um, we call it building a decision framework for mm. when do we blend tools such as a prize tools, prize platforms with our more traditional small business proposals, grants and contracts yep. into a logical flow during a, the time of a project. And we think it can work throughout a project life cycle. That's great. And so this type of approach for me is so valuable because you are approaching it strategically with forethought and then measuring your impacts mm -hmm. of results. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and at uh, the broader federal government perspective, as you know, we're trying to get more agencies engaged in exactly this type of open innovation. Mm -hmm. And together with the administration, I know that NASA stood up the Center of Excellence for Collaborative Innovation in mm -hmm. December. Mm -hmm. You, as um, one of the leads on that Center of Excellence, can you tell me more about what you're offering to some of your sister agencies? Sure. Um, it's actually a second collaborative center that we've mm -hmm. stood up um, for the same reasons, though, that mm -hmm. if, if we're all going to benefit by these results, that finding a, a vehicle that allows us to share best practices, share the learnings, mm -hmm. and uh, connect people, uh, and, and perhaps even uh, get agencies to combine on on prizes uh, yeah. as we go forward. There are some examples of that now, but we think forums like this would only increase that likelihood. Mm -hmm. So it's about uh, results, it's about best practices, and it's about learning from each other. And so I think to have a center where you collect that information and can easily distribute it and then run forums like today um, are just invaluable in connecting everyone. So in addition to capturing best practices and then spreading that word out, um, are you actually working with agencies in a concrete way to run pilot programs? We are. So in addition to uh, sort of this overview type uh, forum, we've run a training program recently mm -hmm. where we actually brought in um, platform providers and with our own experience so that agencies could actually get down to the nuts and bolts of running a prize mm -hmm. and uh, understand what what different platforms do and how they might work for them. Great, and one of my last questions for you is, have you actually partnered with those other agencies, a handful of them, on running pilot programs? Are there some specific examples of how you're running some other agency competitions through the center right now? Um, we have, we, we've actually run them through the NASA Tournament Lab that my okay. colleague at NASA headquarters, Jason Cruzan, yep. uh, runs. And uh, we've done some challenges uh, most recently for the U.S. Uh, Patent and Trade Office. Right. And there are some upcoming. So uh, we do, we are already starting with um, running prizes with other agencies. So last question, do you feel like you're still learning as you go through this about the best practice of collaborative innovation? Absolutely. Every time I come to one of these conferences, mm -hmm. I learn something else. And so I think the, the amazing thing about these forums is we, we all approach problems slightly differently. Mm -hmm. uh, we have different results. And I, I know there are a number of takeaways from today. And, and hopefully, we'll all enrich that body of knowledge by coming to these. That's great. Well, I want to thank you for your leadership and for your willingness to share not only your best practices, but what you're learning from other agencies with those who are getting engaged in the center and for all the time you spend on making the center successful. So thank you so much. Thank you.